So Michael Chong, a former conservative cabinet minister who's now a backbencher, has introduced a private member's bill to change how party leaders in Ottawa, including the prime minister, interact with their MPs. I truly have never seen the sort of ecstasy in the media party for a bill of any kind by any party ever. I, I just haven't. It's really weird to watch and to think that this is a bill put forward by a conservative. But that's one of the reasons the media party loves this bill, because it guts the powers of the party leader. And of course, Michael Chong's party leader is named Stephen Harper. So the media party sees this bill as a shot at Harper. So they're downright giddy. But Chong has said he supports Harper, and this bill is written so that it won't kick in until after the next election. Anyways, I'm not going to try to psychoanalyze why the media party is having this giant emotional eruption over weird changes to caucus rules. I'll just show you why they're wrong to support it. Let's start with Section 6 of the bill. Chong says it's about giving MPs power in Parliament taking power away from the prime minister. Here, let me read the part where MPs can fire their party leader, even the prime minister himself. I quote, A leadership review may be initiated by the submission of a written notice to the caucus chair signed by at least 15% of the members of the party's caucus. Now, the bill defines caucus as MPs, not senators. But still, if 15% of a party's MPs demand a leadership vote, they get it? Well, Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party has 34 seats. So if five MPs don't like him, they can force a leadership vote? Or, or, or 15 NDPers or 24 Conservatives? And get this, that leadership vote triggered by just 15% of a party's sitting MPs, that leadership vote isn't open to party members. It's open only to other sitting MPs who get to vote in secret, and they can sack a party leader right then and there by a simple majority in secret. Oh, and it's better than that. Only MPs who show up to a meeting can vote. So, and I'm going to use the Liberals again as an example here, since they just had their leadership this year. 104,000 Liberals voted in their leadership race this year, and 79% of them chose Justin Trudeau, or about 81,000. That's a lot of people voting in Canada. But if just five Liberal backbench MPs don't like Trudeau for some reason, they can force another leadership vote and maybe do it every week if they want, and every Liberal MP had better show up because that leadership vote is only for MPs who show up at the meeting. So you're back in the riding, you're sick maybe, you're overseas, tough luck. There are 34 Liberal MPs. If only 25 attended that meeting, it's not an impossible situation. All it takes is 13 MPs who don't like Justin Trudeau, and he's fired? Seriously, fired. And those MPs can then choose any interim leader that they want to, boom, it's just done. To hell with the 81,000 liberals who chose Trudeau. 13 MPs don't like him, so he's fired. And this, I should tell you, is being sold as some improvement in democracy to stop power from being concentrated in the prime minister's office. Well, it'll do that. It'll take power away from the prime minister's office and put it in the hands of any 15% of a party's MPs who might not like the leader. Oh, by the way, is the number of malcontents in any party ever less than 15%? And if those grumblers ever get a meeting where they can eke out 51% of the votes, they can sack even a prime minister. Even if it's just one week after tens of thousands of party members choose him as leader. Even if it's a week after that prime minister wins a national election. This bill doesn't just neuter the prime minister. It completely, utterly cuts out regular party members and the general public. Of course, there's nothing in this bill that stops the new interim party leader from having a vote of non-confidence brought against him too. And in fact, that almost certainly would happen. I mean, to use the case of Justin Trudeau again, if 13 MPs managed to fire Trudeau, you can bet that at least five MPs, Trudeau plus four more, would try to fire the new interim leader. They'd be able to get 15% of the caucus again in the case of Liberals, just five MPs, to trigger another vote, and so on. What a stupid law! And of course, completely disconnected from the public, or even party members. Oh, but it gets better. See, it's one thing for MPs to sack their leader. Uh, two months before an election is called, two months after an election is over, whatever. But this bill allows MPs to kick anyone out of the caucus, too. So it can't even be sold as putting a check on the power of the Prime Minister. It turns the elite MPs club 
into an even more elitist club where they can just fire MPs from their own party, even if those MPs have just been democratically elected under the party banner. Here, let me read section 12 from this bill. A member of a caucus may only be expelled from it if A, the caucus chair has received a written notice signed by at least 15% of the members of the caucus requesting that the member's membership be reviewed at a meeting of the caucus, and B, the expulsion of the member is approved by a majority vote by secret ballot of the caucus members present at that meeting. So again, 15% of MPs decide to blackball a guy, and they can force a secret vote. And if they get 50% in that secret vote, and again, you better get your MPs to that meeting, boy, well, they can just fire an MP. So you can have an MP who wins 70, 80% support in your home riding. Liberal, Tory, NDP, or whatever. 80% of the riding loves this guy as a liberal, a Tory, an NDP, or whatever. But 15% of a group of MPs can sign a letter blacklisting him, and in a quick meeting of MPs, even without everybody there, in secret, if half the MPs in the room agree to kick that guy out of caucus, they can? What a bizarre bill! So there's no real power that the party leader has other than what he can do at any given moment before another SNAP leadership review. Other parts of this bill actually force the party leader to appoint any candidate chosen by the local riding association, no matter what that candidate's flaws are. So the party leader is forced to take a candidate even if that candidate would be a disaster for the campaign, if he's embarrassing, if he's scandalous. So the party leader cannot stop anyone from running for the party. But then an MP can be fired by fellow MPs, and MPs can even fire the party leader, and this is all being done in the name of democracy? And more to the point, why are the internal ways that each party chooses its leader a matter for parliament and laws? Why can't each party choose its own method. I mean, one member, one vote, or a convention with delegates, or the point system the liberals just used. Why would you bring Elections Canada and those bureaucratic hacks into an in internal party matter? Look, barely a month ago, the Conservative Party had its big convention. They had all sorts of votes on their party constitution. Michael Chong could have proposed these changes to his own fellow party members. Now, they would have laughed him out of Calgary. Why would thousands of grassroots conservatives across the country say, yeah, we trust a bunch of backbench MPs, most of whom we've never heard of, to make all the important decisions about the party, including firing the leader, and yeah, just, just cut us out completely. Only the media party is stupid enough to think this law democratizes things, and only the media party is too stupid to realize that we can change party leaders plenty often enough in Canada right now. I mean, the Liberals alone have had seven leaders in 10 years. Uh, apparently, that's not often enough for Michael Chong. I read the bill, and it's a crock. But I really didn't even have to bother reading it. Any bill that so excites the media party, huh, well, you can be sure without even reading it, it's good for Ottawa and bad for the rest of us.